All right, this week in study topics, we're going over cranial nerves. This is a topic that is appropriate for either the written or the practical. So if you do need help preparing for your exams, make sure you contact us and we'd love to help you. All right, let's talk about mastering cranial nerves. Now, there's a few things you absolutely have to know to get these stations right. So number one, you need to know your general anatomy of cranial nerves. Number two, you need to know whether the cranial nerve has sensory or motor component. You also want to know if it has sympathetic or parasympathetic components as well. Okay. Next, you need to know how to assess each of the cranial nerves. Um, and this is more for the practical exam, but they still could ask you this on the written. Next, you want to know what a normal test looks like and what's an abnormal test mean. Okay. So really critical. You need to know how to do the test and you need to know how to interpret the test results. And last, you need to know your unique characteristics for each cranial nerve. All right, let's test your knowledge. Are cranial nerves considered part of the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system? I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay, the answer is peripheral nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system is composed of the paired spinal uh, and cranial nerves. We also want to know about what it does. So it, it sends messages to and from the spinal cord to the brain. If we look at the central nervous system, we're looking at the brain and spinal cord. And this is really the command center. So when you think of cranial nerves, think of the peripheral nervous system. Okay, we're gonna test your knowledge again. I'm gonna give you a task. So grab a sheet of paper, and what I want you to do is list out all the cranial nerves from one to 12, and I want you to list whether there are, whether the components are motor, sensory, or both. Okay, how did you do with that one? So I'm gonna give you a little memorization trick. Now there's some crude memorization tricks out there, um, but there are some other ones, and so that's what I'm gonna stick to. So you're gonna go with some say money matters, but my brother says big brains matter more. Big brains matter more. Okay, so S means sensory, M means motor, and B means both. So if we take example of cranial nerve three, cranial nerve three is associated with a third word. So that would be money, meaning money is motor. So we know that cranial three is only motor. Okay. If we think about cranial nerve three, we know that it deals with extraocular eye movements, pupil size and reactivity. It also deals with convergence of the eyes and eyelid movement as well. Okay, let's test your cranial nerve uh, knowledge again. So with this, what I want you to do is how would you test for motor impairment of the extra eye, extraocular eye muscles, okay? I'm gonna give you one minute to think about this, all right? So we're gonna put a timer on the screen and we're gonna check back in one minute. All right, how do you test for motor impairments of the eye muscles? Well, you get them to move their eyes. So have the patient gaze upward right, upward left, horizontal right, horizontal left, downward right, and downward left. Alternatively, you could have the patient follow the tip of your pen in the H movement.
Now, if you haven't seen the H movement completed before, let's talk about what it tests. All right, now this may look like a confusing image, but I'm gonna explain it to you and break it down. So here we're looking at the right eye and you can see where the nose is. Now when we're doing that H, this is the movements that we are testing. So when we're going horizontal left, looking towards the nose, we're checking the medial rectus muscle or cranial nerve three. Same thing if we're going horizontal right, we're checking the lateral rectus muscle. Now we can kind of work through all of these muscle movements and see that if we're going to the right upwards, we're using superior rectus, again, cranial nerve three, and so on and so, so forth. Inferior oblique, superior oblique, and inferior rectus. Now if you do have questions about this image, make sure you comment below. So how did you do with the cranial nerve test I just threw at you? Well, if you want more information on cranial nerves, we actually have some really good videos that are already in the library. So check out the cranial nerve innervation of the tongue, good video, and also check out the facial nerve upper versus lower motor neurons, and we'll link those here for you. Thanks for joining me.